Hi, this is Dr. Corey Moss on Looking Your Best. I wanted to take a few minutes today and talk a little bit about PRP, platelet-rich plasma, which a lot of people are talking about, not just in plastic or aesthetic surgery, but in orthopedic surgery and neurology and many other areas of medicine. Uh, there's a lot of exciting uh, news about it, a lot of enthusiasm about PRP. And I first of all want to explain what PRP is so everybody has an understanding about it and then talk a little bit about the science or the lack thereof as it relates to PRP use in plastic surgery and in hair transplantation, two areas where there certainly is a lot of interest in its use. First of all, what is PRP? PRP stands for platelet-rich plasma. The platelets are small particles in the blood. They really don't qualify as cells. They're living in a sense, but they don't have a cell nucleus and they do circulate around in the bloodstream with the red and the white blood cells. The red blood cells carry oxygen, the white ones, the white blood cells are the ones that fight infection. With PRP, we are trying to isolate these little platelet particles. Historically, platelets are thought of as particles that are responsible for starting the cascade of blood clotting. And they do that by a couple of their characteristics. When the blood vessel's injured, a platelet will attach to it. They're really sticky. And they'll stick to that injury on a blood vessel, small or large. And they actually clump together and form a lattice work, essentially a plug that plugs a blood vessel up, whether it's large or small. And in fact, this is one of the reasons in plastic surgery, and especially with cosmetic injections and other things, where we want to have minimal bruising with minimal downtime, we encourage people not to take aspirin or aspirin-related products because PRP, or platelets, if you will, that are circulating in the bloodstream, are responsible for stopping and bleeding. Aspirin, interestingly, and non-steroidal anti-inflammatories I mentioned, inhibit the aggregation or the sticking together, the formation of that lattice work in platelets. So really important for people to know that that's the reason we ask people not to take aspirin or non-steroidals around the time of procedures or surgery so we can reduce bruising and bleeding related complications. Now, that's the way most people think of platelets and really it's a very important function of platelets. But when we're talking about PRP, we're actually harvesting some of the other features of it and it's not just the platelets themselves. PRP is really obtained from your own body, so it's an autologous system, meaning it's using your own tissue, in this case the blood. A small needle is used to draw a vial or more than one vial of blood. The blood is spun down in a centrifuge, and the red blood cells, which have weight, go to the bottom. And there's a layer in the serum part of the, of the test tube then that we know is quite rich in platelets. And so this is what, we, what the term platelet-rich plasma, plasma is the circulating non-cellular component of our blood, PRP is really in that plasma. Okay, so the PRP component is the layer of the serum that has the most platelets in it, and we isolate that serum and platelet mixture, if you will, when we're using PRP. So it's really important, first of all, to understand what it is and then what it does. The platelets themselves are important because they're involved in the clotting cascade, but they also secrete, interestingly, a whole list of important proteins that may or may not, and this is a very important point, be helpful in promoting wound healing and reducing or improving or modulating in some ways the inflammatory and wound healing response. And this is where all the excitement is. So, so platelets are more than just blood clotting types of particles in the blood. Uh, every platelet itself is really just a storehouse of all kinds of growth factor and signaling molecules that we call cytokines that are important in recovery and the healing of tissue itself. Included in the list of these very important factors is one called platelet-derived growth, uh, growth factor, or P, uh, PDGF, which promotes blood vessel growth and cell replication and even helps with skin formation. Transforming uh, growth factor beta, TGF-beta, is something that we've had in our skincare products historically, which uh, also promotes the matrix and the, really the architecture between cells and in some ways really profoundly affects uh, bone metabolism. 
There's vascular endothelial growth factor that's uh, big if VEGEF, VEGF, and the vascular endothelial growth factor promotes blood vessel formation. So this is one of those areas where we say, well, if it can, if platelet-rich plasma has uh, vascular endothelial growth factor in it, can it help to promote, to promote improved take of hair grafts, for example? And really, the, unfortunately, there's no studies that have proven this. But again, these are important factors that uh, platelet-rich plasma would have in it or that the platelet themselves that we're using have in them and can be secreted. Just a brief list I've gone through. It's platelet-derived growth factor, transforming growth factor beta, uh, vascular endothelial growth factor. Uh, there's also epidermal growth factor or EGF, fibroblast growth factor, uh, which promotes the growth of uh, specialized cells and along with it helps with blood uh, vessel formation. And then there's one called IGF, which is really an insulin-like growth factor that is important in physiology of, of almost all the cells in the body. And there are really many other proteins and other materials that are in the serum and in the plasma that may or may not be helpful in promoting wound healing or enhancing the effects of some of the fillers, devices, products, or supplies that we use or overall shortening or improving the wound healing process. In general, the platelet-rich plasma and platelets themselves have other proteins besides the one I've just discussed that may or may not improve the wound healing, uh, the rate of wound healing, the efficiency of wound healing, the take of grafts such as hair grafts or skin grafts, etc. The problem that we have with, right, with it right now is as much excitement and anecdotal information we have about PRP, there haven't been really well done controlled clinical trials that have shown a difference between using a blank or a placebo and comparing against a PRP combination with these various treatments. What we do know for sure in procedures like facelift and other areas where we're lifting skin flaps is that putting platelets down in this bed can improve hemostasis, in other words, reduce the amount of bleeding because the platelets are activated anywhere. And for this reason alone, we know there is some benefit to PRP, and that is in hemostasis. The rest of the claims being made have to be substantiated by science for us to be very thoughtfully and honestly answering our patients that they're going to be a long-term benefit. And while we're all excited about it, and I'm certainly happy to write it to patients, I want to make sure everybody understands that we are really looking for that data. There are a couple trials that are designed that are important in here already. There are others in plastic surgery that we'll be looking to. We have a couple designs here ourselves at the Moss Clinic. So if you have any other questions about platelet-rich plasma and its use in hair transplantation or in plastic surgery, even in cosmetic injections where there's been some enthusiasm in what's called the vampire lift, please don't hesitate to call or write. Uh, we'll be, I'm always happy to answer questions. If you've had experience with PRP that you'd like to share with me or comment on it uh, with me or have me comment on it, please don't hesitate to share that experience. As always, it's my pleasure. This is Dr. Corey Moss on Looking at Us.